is the Big O Show. What I'd like to do is get you whiny little bitches, and I'd like to, like, you remember the show Sliders? Where you could go into an alternate uh, zone that is the same world, but it's a, like another world and maybe something different. And then what I want to do is I want to stick you whiny little bitches inside a portal that the last 20 years get repeated over and over again. And you never get out of it. That's what I hope for you guys. Because if you can't appreciate today, you don't, you don't deserve what's coming tomorrow. Marcel. Good evening, sir. How you doing, my friend? Good, man. Uh, you know, in and out of there pretty quick. Felt nice to uh, get back in the stadium, see some real football again. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was an interesting day league wide, huh? Yeah, a lot of sloppy football being played all over the place. And um, again, the theme I've talked about with all the guys, and I'll do it with you. Mike McDaniel's been pretty damn consistent. His team right. look pretty prepared in their practices, in their scrimmages with teams, in their preseason games. And today, his team was better prepared than the GOATS team. Uh, pretty impressive for a young coach. He has done a nice job of preparing his teams for each stage. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I thought he caught a great game today. You can't play scared <clears throat> or coach scared against Bill Belichick. I thought that he did a good job of setting, I guess, his own tone, setting his own pace. Um, love the fourth down call. Obviously, it worked out the way, you know, it worked out the best possible, the best possible way. But, you know, there is a lot of analytics involved in his decisions today. Uh, there's only, a, per next gen stats, there's only two occasions where, you know, the analytics, the numbers, suggested not to go for it or suggested to go for it and he punted instead of you know trying so I, I thought it was a it was a reasonably aggressive game plan um offense felt like it had a little bit of a purpose I, I don't even know if I can say a purpose but it felt like it had some bite to it it felt like chunk plays were possible unlike last year you're you're praying and hoping okay maybe there will be one or two where they gain double digit yards it felt like anytime Jalen anytime Tyreek touched the ball that uh, something special could happen. Uh, run game non-existent. That's got to change. But uh, you know, beyond that, uh, again, we focus a lot on the. Uh, we focus a little too much on on the how and not the what. So uh, I'm, I'm focusing on the what here. It's a double digit or a multiple score victory against a team that I said last week they needed to beat by multiple scores. Here we are. No, they. I, I think they had uh, a hell of a performance overall as a team. <clears throat> uh, I thought it was a, a hell of a performance by them. They they did exactly what they needed to do in order to uh, to get the victory. And, and and in the end, dude, that's that's all that matters. I was just hoping for a one point win. You, this game was never in doubt. That's also the thing that you cannot lose sight of. At no point, it was the first drive of the game for the Patriots was the only time there was some doubt, and then they got the turnover. <laughs> After that, there was no doubt in the rest of that game. So I think if you're a Dolphins fan, you know, you, you got to sit back and just say, hey, man, let me appreciate what happened today, man. They, they won. Yeah, that, it was strong. Again, it, it was a strong performance. I thought obviously better on offense than it was uh, for Miami, better on offense than, than they were on defense. Uh, you know, Mac Jones didn't look like anything special. Still 21 of 30. But 213 yards, he's he's checking down for most of that game. It's not like even – it's not really even like Miami got all that much pressure on him either. If I'm, you know, looking at the numbers right now, I think six combined pressures from five different players. You know, that, that it's not like they were in his grill like uh, New England's defense was in Tua's grill all game. So uh, I, I just thought it was, you know, from the back end, especially without uh, without Byron. Um, playing, you know, Needham on the outside, which is not his natural position. Uh, Kater Kohu playing a lot. I, I thought that all things considered, uh, this defense, this was the kind of performance that, you know, it, it's encouraging considering they were Jekyll and Hyde from, you know, the first half of the season to the second half of the, half of the season in 2021. So for them to start off on a positive note is encouraging. Now, I think this Patriots team is going to be bad, and I think this offense is going to be one of the worst in the NFL. So you got to take it with a grain of salt. But 
you have to be able to take advantage of those matchups and their ability to do so. Again, it's encouraging. I'm with you there. What do we know about Teron Armstead's injury? I talked to him after the game, asked, you know, how he was feeling. He said, uh, <laughs> he joked and said, man, I'm pretty banged up, man. And then laughed and said, he was just kidding. Uh, had an issue. He didn't want to specify. Said he had an issue toward the end of the game, got it cleaned up and uh, was able to finish out. Uh, you know, he said he'll be back to work tomorrow. Uh, assuming that means he's going to be in there getting treatment. Uh, don't think it's anything that's going to cause him to miss time. Maybe, maybe, you know, it might be limited in practice uh, throughout this week. Might We might see a rest day from him. Uh, you know, at some point this week, but uh, I don't think it's anything to be overly concerned about. We'll hear more about Austin Jackson when the time comes. Uh, tomorrow will be a little more illuminating than, you know, whatever Mike says directly after a game. What did you hear? Because it looked like he was like touching his foot, I think it was, or lower uh, ankle was the uh, ankle was the yeah. official was the official yeah. report. Uh, mm -hmm. so it, it's, I mean, that's it's scary because you gotta you, you 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 saw it a little bit there. What can happen? Uh, if Greg Little needs to play and Tehran goes down or Tehran has to leave at, at, for any point, then it's it shuffles everything because, you know, while a lot of these guys have multiple position flexibility, uh, they have been they haven't been cross training a whole lot throughout training camp. It has generally been the same five from start to finish at their cert, at their set position. So when you have to kick Liam over the left tackle, that it just it, it jumbles everything up. And, uh, you know, kind of detracts from the chemistry and continuity that they've built throughout training camp. So it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, but I, I would expect Toronto to be OK. We will see what uh, we, we will see what the, what the deal is. with Austin probably get a better deal idea of it tomorrow. We'll get a very good uh, idea of it come Wednesday. I got to look at the film again and look a little closer. It didn't look like Greg was too bad, actually, when he came in. Like, it's fine. You, uh, there was a point where all right, actually, you know? th there was a point where Miami tried to toss to the right hand side there, and I think the third quarter, um, and Chase, I want to say, lost five six yards. Um, it, it was a the lineman on the right side, right guard, right tackle moved up to the second level, moved up to the linebacker level. I think that we you even we had a back and forth about that. That wasn't necessarily Little's fault. Um, it was just a good call. Yeah, no, they, they sent them to the second level. It wasn't their fault on that one. That, that was that was that, that they called the perfect defensive play to their play there. That's all they did. It was a good play. It was a good play from New England because uh Kyle Duggar sniffed it out immediately. He's, he's such a stud, dude. Yeah, Jesus that kid was good. Get out a good game. I, uh, he's he's just a great player, period. It's not that he had a good game, he's a son of a bitch. That guy's awesome. Um, all right, so a couple things. Let's nitpick here. Maybe some questions that you may have for some of the coaches this week. Jalen uh, Phillips, Phillips still being put in coverage at times. Not a fan. No, and, and again, I'm going to have to rewatch some film there to, to watch certain things on defense. But uh, I, I, I my biggest question moving into next week is uh, – is the struggles on the on the ground? You no, know, no, I know, I know the team that, I know that, team that couldn't. Me, but you couldn't run the ball all summer, yes, and now you job. still can't run the ball in the season. I'm not worried, but at some point, it, it's got to click. It's got to yeah. click. Uh, I thought hey, Edmonds and Mostert both looked better in the passing game than they did on the ground. When your two tackles get injured, it's just hard, and then you weren't really having success yeah. even when they were healthy. Yeah, that's what I was saying. They were struggling before they got hurt. Yeah, so. it's not. It's not. A, it's not a good unit yet. That's the obvious stuff. Let me nitpick with some other stuff. The Jalen Phillips stuff. Okay. The other one, from what I've seen in a couple of weeks, I already know that Cater Kohu is a better athlete, yeah. has better ball skills in the air than Nick Needham any day of the week and twice on Sundays. Nick Needham should be inside, and if you're going to play somebody while Byron's out, I'm going Cater Kohu. What he did with Hunter Henry today, that was nasty. Nasty. That's the kind of stuff that you either have the sick athletic ability to do that when you're half the size of that man, and then on the outside too. For me, Kohu is better suited to be the outside corner replacing Byron Jones than Nick Needham. Your thoughts on that? You no, know, it's kind of it, it's almost funny at this point to think that every time we saw team drills during training or in training camp, Noah was the first cornerback out there. 
You know, at no point did Noah lose that starting job. So we were bred to believe that Noah Igbenogany was in line for the starting job, even though with our eyes we see there's no way that that should happen. And it turns out, yeah, okay, that was it was a smoke screen all along. It was there, reps. Dolphins it was believe reps. It wasn't a smoke screen. It was reps. Here's kid. Here kid. Here kid. Here kid. Okay, you ain't got it. We got to go the other way. Like, it, 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 or maybe not as much of a smoke screen as it is. You know, we're not seeing something that the coaching staff isn't like they weren't blind to it or they weren't seeing they weren't seeing something that we weren't with him. They weren't impressed with him in ways that we couldn't see. Like it, uh, it it's a horrible look to not be active, at least like that. That was that's rough. That's yeah. rough for. Yeah, but but I, I'm I, I, I don't know if you saw the tweet I put out. People got to start pumping the brakes on the Noah shit. You got to stop already because. It's a spoiled bullshit that's going on. The front office hit on X. They hit on Minka. They hit on Javon Holland. They hit on Brandon Jones. They found Nick Needham off the street. Trill Williams was on his way. Now they get Cater Kohu. Dude, numbers are you're supposed to screw up with Noah Igmanogamy. You can't keep hitting on everybody that you draft or find undrafted. I mean, they've been so they reached good. bad. They've been so good in the secondary to complain about it Noah. Does, look. Is that both sad? things can both things can be true, but no, no, just because no. they hit on other people does no. not mean that no. you can ignore getting that you can ignore missing the note. That was a missed pick, and it was a first round pick. You blew a year. You you Big blew that deal. fifth year. N name me the team that gets Minka and Javon Holland in the NFL. Go ahead, name it. Name it. Please name I, it. In the last five years, these are not. The they're not mutually exclusive. No, no, hey, name me the team that has drafted two safeties and X in the last five, six, what is it, is X, six, seven years? In the last seven years, you've drafted one of the best corners in the NFL and two of the best safeties in the NFL. Do we, this guy's supposed to hit on every pick? Look, it sucks that you missed on him if you missed on him. But to, ha to, I guess. Keep, to keep haggling over this shit after they hit on all the other ones, it just gets to be ridiculous. I, I don't. I guess I don't know the. I don't know what the point is slam, here because, like, I'm gonna it's slam a the hell out of all of you that hang it, on this no bullshit when they're hitting on all it's the a other. Miss, they just because you recognize that Noah was a missed pick does not take away from the fact that they've hit on other picks. Again, this is not a mutually exclusive situation. They they did hit and they they have replacements. They will be okay. They'll be okay. But it's like damn. That, that's You're, when he, that's this kid can't even crack the active roster, dude. That's what your article has to be. That these guys are such fucking badasses that they can miss on Noah and they replace him with people off the street. And they I think they would. Off, and they I, find I think that if I think if we like, ask Chris Greer, dude, if, if Chris Greer got into his head, like he would say he would rather it the other way around. He would rather have hit on Noah and missed on a undrafted then hit on the undrafted and miss on Noah. It, it's still it is what it is. Like they're, they're they have other players. They have other players, but it's a it, like it's miss. It is what it is. Yeah, but it, you're being captain obvious. Of course you want to hit on your first round pick. But my, I, don't, I don't know what our argument is. Like I don't, I don't know what the I guess I just don't know what the discussion is here because it's the, the, it, the discussion you know, is, ignore. you guys gotta stop with the Noah bullshit already. Get past no, it. They replaced them already. That's it. They have the replacement. The like you can, we're, every, people are allowed to bring it up. People are allowed to bring it up. There aren't think pieces that aren't going to happen on Noah Igmanogany because the team's success was not hinging on Noah Igmanogany. He was inactive. That is the only tweet that I have said about him all day. <laughs> he, he, he was not active. But he can't make the great. He's still not making the game day roster. And, that, and they don't need him. That's the it's beauty. Done. They don't need him. That's awesome. So why harp on it? Why not talk about Cater Kohu, who's a hell of a find? And and if Trill Williams stays healthy, the depth you would have had even without Noah would have been pretty cool. Overall. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I sent three, four tweets about Cater Kohu and one on Noah. So that's, again, like we're, if people are moving on, that doesn't mean like Noah is a topic that is never going to be broached again. Like people, it's going to be discussed at some point. It's going to be brought up. It doesn't have to be the focal point, 
But like, that's all right. When somebody you know, brings no it up, just because I'll, they I'll, hit, and when they bring it up, I'll bring the other six guys that they hit, and I go, okay, so they missed on one. They, they, please name me another another front office that can do that. Just please, please name it for me. I'd love to find the other front office in the last six to seven years that can find three guys off the street that can play and start and help you, and they can find three studs in the draft. Okay, the Bills so just started a seventh round rookie, an undrafted or a seventh round pick, an undrafted rookie at corner, yeah. and killed the Rams. Uh, you know, with the exception of Cooper Cup doing his Cooper Cup things. Yeah. Like they're, it's, it, it, they're not the only ones in the NFL. It, they should be proud of it, but like, well, but that's what I'm saying. That's what the article should be. Hey, it sucks that they missed on Noah. What article? But if you look at the big picture, they're what, actually what? incredible in their secondary selections because that's what they are. They are incredible with their with their selections in the secondary. When you miss one out of seven, you're incredible in the second. Say it with me. Say it with six out of seven. This is not a productive conversation because I am not arguing against you. (laughs) You're arguing with – it's like there's a screen. It's not my face. It's like a screen of all the comments that make you angry. I am not arguing against you. I know that they have a good secondary. I have called Javon and and Brandon Jones the next Hyden Poyer. I love the, the tandem. Like, I am not personally arguing against it. Like, we, like so I don't need to say it with you. I, I agree. I agree that their secondary is fine. They need a CB2 long term. We'll see if Kohu can, can figure this out. We'll see if, uh, we'll see, you know, how long it takes for a trail, trail back next year, too. So maybe they, like, they had some depth right there, dude. No, well, we'll have to, see, we'll see what, you know, we'll see what happened. But I mean, they didn't get burnt by it. However, it's not for lack of trying. I mean, need them at outside wasn't the answer today because that seemed like the only thing. It seemed like the only thing that the Patriots came into this game focused on doing is exploiting downfield matchups opposite of Xavier and Howard, whether it was Noah, whether it was Needham or Cry. It didn't matter who it was. It, feel, it felt like they said, look, we're going to try to run the ball and we're going to throw it deep and we have one-on-one coverage, the guy who was not X. And – you know, it, Mac missed on a couple, but he had, he hit on one or two that were beautiful balls. And uh, I, it's Needham wasn't the answer. He's a good nickel corner. He's a good. Oh, I love guy. Needham. I not, love Needham. Guy. Not an outside guy. Yeah, uh, I love Needham. I want him inside. I'll figure, I, I, it, out. I'll figure it out eventually. Um, outside, I think he's no. got the better. I I think he's got the the athleticism to play on the outside. That, to me, I, I love what I see from that guy. All right, what do you got going on on ESPN so folks can check you out? Marcel, Louis, Jacques, hopefully well, right not away, on, on Noah. Right away, I mean, I was watching Kansas City beat the brakes off of Arizona or going to watch Arizona beat the brakes off of Arizona, but uh, I think the more productive thing to do would be throw the condensed game on. I think it should be uploaded to NFL Plus now, so we get a second look at this game, at the Dolphins game. Uh, figure out some talking points for next week. And then, uh, honestly, man, I got to I got to pack because uh, I'm, I'm driving Haley out to to Dallas next week before she starts her new job. So uh, I will meet everybody in. She's leaving us after. She's going to Cowboys, man. Got She's what? The Cowboys. She got hired by the Cowboys. Yeah, the, the Cowboys called her and said, "We're not even opening this job up for anybody else. This is you. We want you. What do well, we yeah. need to do to get you?" What yob? What yob is she doing? Uh, team reporter, host, producer. She's going to be an on-camera host. She's going to do... You know, for their website? For yeah, their, their uh, website. For the team itself. Jerry Jones is her boss, technically. That's a great job right there. Nah, it's awesome. She's from Dallas. I'm so proud of her. She's watching this. I'm so happy for you. So uh, there's no way in hell I'm letting her drive 20 hours by herself. So we're going to do that. And uh, I will rejoin the team wow. in, in Baltimore this weekend. There's still some chivalry in this world. Yeah, How come about on, that? Wow, good for you. I like that. So, come on. It's, 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 that wasn't even a conversation. I don't know, bro. In today's world, there are some dudes out there that they just don't take care of their girls the way they should, bro. So, kudos to you, dude. That's, yeah. that's very nice. That's very so, nice. H- Haley, I was questionable there if you had something here, but I think you might have something here, actually, with Marcel. There might be something there. I don't know. I'm just saying. So 
happy for her, man. She gets to uh, she gets to do her dream job. She gets out of that nightmare NBC station, and we will be where everybody's happier for it. Awesome, good for her, bro. She well deserved. She's cool. I wanted her to stay here because she's a pro, bro. She does. She does a really good job. I think she. <laughs> hey, look, man. Y'all gonna have to ask NBC smooth, Six. Smooth <laughs> y'all, as ice, man. If you uh, like, not, if you like sure. Haley, ask NBC Six why they told her that they weren't picking her up. Now, listen, I've been in this business. I know when people don't know talent and what the hell are you going to do? Like, you know imagine I mean? imagine telling somebody, yeah, we don't find value in we don't find value in you. And then three days later, the most valuable organization in sports tells you we're offering you a position that we're not opening up to the public. Meanwhile, she gets Rick Ross to say, yeah, I'll, I'll work with Teron Armstead. Yeah, no, yeah. of course. <laughs> yeah, she's not, no, she's not. You know. God's Whatever, bro. It's uh, I, I've been in this business a long time, bro. I've I, I've watched way too many people get screwed all the damn time, bro. It's a shame. But guess what? You stay strong. You stay positive. You come out in the end the right way. And guess what? That's what she just did. So yes, so love it. Happy for her. Happy for her. All right, there you go. Hey, drive careful and make sure you don't have a Garmin like they have in the Russian truck, Russian tanks. That they get lost. Make sure you have something that can get you. Garmin, the it's gonna be all Apple, man. Okay. Apple Maps, Apple Apple just Apple. something, whatever. Got our something plans better. already. So yeah. you don't want anything that the Russian tanks have. That's why they're all littered all over Ukraine and broken down. So get the proper equipment. All right, my brother, I appreciate you. We'll talk to you uh, later on in the week. Yes, sir. Y'all take it easy. You got it. We love him, Marcel Louis Jacques. He's got the edge, baby. You want the edge? Go to myedgedrink.com, the finest energy drink on the planet. Use our code Big O. Get 10% off. Delicious, smooth, zero aftertaste, and 78 calories. I tell you all the time. Get it, man. Myedgedrink.com. You can't get it in a store, but you can get it delivered right to your home. Myedgedrink.com and use our code Big O. Support the great people at Edge Energy Drink. They support our shows here. That's Marcel Louis Jacques. You now have the edge. You now have the edge.